I call Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As most people are aware uh, across the House that I've made a commitment to the elimination of sexual and physical violence across New Zealand. And so it is with pleasure that I rise in support of this bill. I think it's a, it's a very important bill. Uh, not, it's only going to address a small part of the problem. The problem of sexual and physical violence and domestic violence across New Zealand is huge. And make, uh, you know, let's, let's not be, um, think that it's going to take one silver bullet to address the whole issue. Uh, this, though, is a very small part uh, of addressing the issue, and, it, and it's only ta uh, targeting very few people. So not everybody who goes to prison is a violent or sexual offender. And those who are, so we're talking about a subset of all the people who go to prison, those people who are uh, sexual or violent offenders, we're only talking about a very small proportion of those people who don't look like they have been rehabilitated, who, don't, who look like that they will re-offend. And with, uh, over the course of their uh, detention in prison, uh, they would have been observed and monitored, uh, their behaviour analysed, their health uh, looked at by various health professionals such as psychiatrists and psychologists. And these people uh, will have basically come together and made a decision that <coughs> when this person is released that they have a very high chance of re-offending. And this is the small group of people that we are talking about, um, Mr Speaker, in terms of the public protection orders. There is a, uh, a threshold that the Chief Executive of the Department of Corrections uh, must um, consider before, that per, uh, before the Chief Executive uh, applies for a public protection order to be made. The offender must be over 18 years of age in the first instance. So we're not talking here about uh, youths or young people. Uh, the person must be in prison for a serious sexual event. So we're not talking about jaywalkers and shoplifters. We're talking about people who have had, uh, committed serious sexual or or violent offences, and they will be released within six months. <clears throat> Mr Speaker, I just want to move to uh, an, um, a subsection of a section of people who I don't think have really been considered as likely to offend, and these are the partners of women uh, who are in prison for domestic violence. Uh, most of those, or many of those offenders, those men who have uh, beaten their wives and may go to prison for it, probably won't display some of the behaviours that we're talking about, a high likelihood of, uh, or, of being observed of you know, having mental issues and, and things like that. And I'm, my concern, uh, sir, is that they will go out and the, many of them are of a high um, risk of reoffending against their partners and their children, but they haven't really uh, they haven't really met the, um, um, the test that other members across the House have described. I'll just go through that again. So they display uh, an intense urge or drive to offend. Many men who have uh, committed domestic violence won't really necessarily display that while they're in prison. Uh, they have an inability to self-regulate their behaviour. Now, most normal adults can regulate their behaviour depending on um, the context, the situation they're in. The, the behaviour we uh, display at work may be, or is often different to the behaviour we display uh, at, when we're with our mates or playing sports, but most of us have the ability to regulate our behaviour. The people who this bill is intended to, uh, who, who will be affected by this bill, don't have that ability, but many men who are convicted, you know, the husbands and the partners of women uh, who, um, who have been beaten up by them, they put, might not necessarily display these behaviours. Uh, the they will show their ability to self-regulate and they might not be picked up under this. Um, they, 
The third um, risk factor is an inability to comprehend the impact of their offending on a person or to display empathy. Uh, the people who we intend to pick up with this uh, through the public protection orders probably can't display that, but many uh, husbands who are violent towards their spouses probably can display that uh, in prison. And also, uh, the fourth risk factor is the poor interpersonal relationship, relationships or social isolation that the, uh, the, the, um, the offenders They'll, they'll have uh, trouble making friends in prison, they'll be socially isolated in prison. However, many of the men, the husbands, the partners who are in prison probably won't display that uh, interpersonal, poor interpersonal relationships or social isolation. So what I'm saying, uh, Mr Speaker, is I have a concern that many violent and abusive husbands and partners will go out and re-offend and yet they won't display these risk factors and to me that is a real issue considering especially that yesterday was White Ribbon Day. Mr Speaker, the legislation in its entirety, the public safety protection, public protection orders bills and the parole extended supervision orders uh, is legislation that the Philip Smith case was designed for. This is the exact reason why legislation like this is necessary. Philip Smith murdered the father of a boy that he was uh, sexually molesting in 1996. He was coming towards the end of his sentence and was given liberties, in fact probably more liberties than a drunken sailor. He was allowed to go out for a number of hours the, he went out unsupervised. The, the length of time that he was allowed out was extended to 24, from 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, Mr uh, Speaker. He was able to apply for a passport under his uh, another name, and that passport he was able to use to get himself over to Chile, then up to Brazil, and it's a wonder anybody caught him at all. Mr Speaker, if the Corrections Department had been on the case, they would have noticed his behaviour was inappropriate and really he should have had uh, an extended supervision order at the very least or a public protection order placed on him so that he wouldn't have been able to basically roam free around uh, the community my concern is if he hadn't have been caught in Brazil, who would have been his victims over there, overseas? We have heard, you know, we know that Brazil isn't, uh, isn't the, their laws and their, their society and their community is a bit looser than ours. We know that there's many street kids uh, over in Brazil and those people would have been uh, at risk of uh, Philip Smith, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, <clears throat> the, uh, the courts, oh sorry, each, each prisoner is going to have an assessment in a, uh, and it has to be done by two or more health professionals including one registered psychologist. The, um, the, so in, in other words, Mr Speaker, we're not just going to lock up Anybody, we're looking at people who are deemed to be at most risk of reoffending. There are a number of checks and balances to make sure uh, that that uh, only this uh, bill will only apply to those people who most uh, need it. Kia ora, Mr. Speaker.